Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Coverage of Creature series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today we're talking about the spell Blur. I wish I had a way, like a setting that I could just like flip and make my camera footage even more blurry than it normally is, but here we are. This That's is. Right. Uh, we get complaints about it all the time, so. Uh, Excellent. Out of them. <laughs> so, uh, Blur is second level on the BHB. This is an. This is a spell. It's one of the most spells of all time. It's got a constant of an action, range of self, verbal components, concentration up to a minute. Your body becomes blurred, shifting and wavering to all who can see you. For the duration, any creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Attacker is immune to this effect if it doesn't rely on sight, as with blind slate, or can see through illusions, as with true sight. I think I like this one more than you do. I don't love a couple things about it. Yes. I. I let's, uh... Rip the band-aid off. Concentration. Yeah, concentration is not where I want my defensive spells to be. I don't want to ca- spend time casting a defensive spell that's going to fall off if I am hit, if it doesn't work as well as I'd like it to. And that's kind of the case with the blur. So this is Artificer Sorcerer Wizard, so these people don't have typically great ACs unless you're like Blade Singer or something, then you have a really bonkers AC. But if you're not Blade Singer, you're looking at like a mage armor at most. Most of the time it's gonna be less than that because mage armor isn't always that worth it. So you're looking at like 13, 15 AC somewhere in that range. This is not gonna prevent every attack from missing. And if you ever break break concentration, this is a really big bummer. I also really hate it takes an action to cast. I can't go into a fight, and do something else round one. If I'm ever caught unaware, I don't want to spend an entire round casting a blur. I just, that's not good enough. That's me for going around to make them hit me less hard. That's taking the dodge action, right? Not and if less this, hard, then, you know, it's disadvantage. Yeah, so it's taking the dodge action. Right. And if they hit you and you lose concentration, it's functionally identical. And that's but not where I want my second level spell slots to be. That's an if. I mean, yeah, I, I read about your dodge action in the written review, but, uh, if it works, then uh, it's uh, twice as good as the dodge action. If it works, if it lasts twice... two rounds, it's two dodge actions for a second level spell slot. If it lasts three rounds, it's three. If it lasts four rounds, it's four. How valuable right. is your second level spell that you'd want to do that? Well, I don't know. It depends on the situation, and I, you're not always going to be caught unaware. Sometimes you'll get you'll get that round in the beginning, like before the fight starts, and think... go blurry. Yeah, I think there's two instances where I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy with that in the instance that I am a frontline character that has a round of prep and is playing a defensive like Abjurer or Blade Singer or other kind of martial, like even on Artificers doing this on the uh, the Armorer seems reasonable, right? Where you have a giant AC anyway, and now you have disadvantage on attack rolls and you feel invincible, right? If you have that prep round on that character, I can kind of see it. I can also see it specifically on characters that are playing upper tier, that are going into a big fight that are backline characters, but cannot afford to take any damage. Right? right. Any that, damage at all kills where you. I kind of see it. Uh, I don't know but about then, any damage. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking you can take one or two hits, and then you're going down. That's where I see it. Like this might, this might save you a hit or two, and get you through the fight. If those fights are that fast, I wonder like what other prep spells would I have rather cast than this? Like I definitely would rather have cased up on somebody than this. I would definitely rather have a lot of other concentration effects up than this, especially in those upper tiers. That's where I start to have really big issues with it, right? Is if I'm playing at seventh, eighth, ninth level, I have conjure stuff I can do. Oh, I have Oh yeah. I mean upper tiers, you're not casting this. This is Which is when I, I would this is specifically for when you get it. I and then you're it's one of your highest level spell slots when you get it. And I would yeah. much rather do like powerful things with my second level spell slot, not taking dodge actions, right? If I'm doing this instead of invisibility, I definitely wish I would have rather cast invisibility. If I'm doing this instead of like even a second level damaging spell, like a uh rhymes binding ice. I'll take rhymes binding ice over this in a lot of situations because it's gonna if I if there's like 12 things getting up on me, I can get them all days advantage on attack rolls or I could kill some of them. I want to kill some of them. That removes them from the fight and from my face. That seems like a much better option. And if I have a prep round to it, I still only have a limited number of two or three spell slots. I don't want to spend them on Blur. Blur is a little right. bit too overcosted there. Let me ask you. I mean, I know invisibility is superior across the board, but in an actual combat... In an actual combat, it gives you... It depends on what you're doing with your actions, but for the most part, you won't be able to contribute to the combat if you do use invisibility on yourself. Right. That's fair. With Blur, right, you can but... hypothetically keep fighting. But even with invisibility, like because the invisibility rules is essentially the same effect, you just, they just get disadvantage on you. 
Yeah, and you have advantage on all of your attack rolls, and they can't physically see you. And they and they can't physically see you is a very important element of yeah, that. Yeah, I guess uh, for spell targeting and stuff. Not just spell targeting, but just like DM interpretation of creatures knowing where you are. That's a really big element that is very much up in the air, and it changes wildly very table to table. Some yeah. creatures will sense your presence, know exactly what's where you are, even if you cast a visibility on yourself, depending on your DM. I don't DM, by the way. I think that guy's kind of dumb. I think there's you can take some theater of the mind into account and say, creatures that are physically invisible can probably obfuscate where they are if there aren't obvious signs that they're there. And then you can use flour and dirt and stuff to make them more evident. But... All right, I'm talking rules as written. The rule, A lot of the rules are dumb. Yeah, that's true. I did also, I think it, the reason that it's relevant to talk about is because I think a lot of people don't actually yeah. run that rules written yeah. as it is stated, because I don't think it's well stated. I don't think it's even necessarily that. I think it's fairly ambiguous in a lot of different cases as well. So there's a lot of caveats with that. But as DOS of invisibility, let's put that on the shelf and say, okay, we're not casting visibility. Screw that spell. We have Blur instead. Um, I don't... Go for it. I was just going to say, yeah, the concentration is a big thing for me. If I'm casting a spell like this, I want it to be because I'm I've got another concentration spell up that I want to protect. And that's like uh like I like uh and I don't I don't think you like this one either. I like mirror image. But uh I like and, mirror and image more than this. I like it for that reason, you know. I'll I'm gonna take a couple of hits and they're not gonna phase me, they're not gonna break my concentration. Uh <laughs> I often talk about pairing them though, that the mirror image is protecting my concentration on blur, which is not ideal. <laughs> it's funny but yeah. then you're like i very difficult to hit now here's again i have the very important question as to what character just wants that right like how many how are you leveraging these defensive abilities to win a fight because they're only usable in fights right blur and major mirror image as mirror image has a little bit more utility in that like you hypothetically play around with the illusions even though they're like constantly shifting I think that's slightly more out of combat usable than Blur, but both of them are basically intended for in combat usage, right? Uh -huh. It's hard to take either of these out of combat. Yeah. So what character puts these on their sheet? What what, what archetype wants these? Like, I don't think Bladesinger really needs them. And I don't think they will, like are willing to commit actions in fights to it. So you definitely need to be pre-fighting, like two rounds before a fight, Blur and Mirror Image, then you dive in with the intention of taking a bunch of hits. That's the one character I would see considering this. Beyond that, like, do you put this on an average illusionist? Do you put this on an average uh, evoker? I don't think so, right? I don't know. I I might just uh, unless I took a closer look at the spell list and saw what second level spells I should be casting instead. Literally all uh, of them. Yeah. <laughs> but, Defensive. I think there are a lot of people that cast this spell that don't need to be. I think a lot of players are afraid to die. And when they're afraid to die, you t put things on your sheet like Blur. And Blur is a, a way to try and mitigate you dying. There are better ways to mitigate you dying, such as playing to your party composition, knowing who's taking the damage, staying a decent distance away, like managing decent ranges from your threatening allies so they can stay within a movement range, so you can stay within a movement range, so people that can heal you to get back up are in range. There are other defensive tactics you can take that let you perform your typical role as a full caster, which is doing lots of damage or locking down enemies with uh, saber dies. Those roles can come into fruition a lot better if you're not wasting concentration in spell slots, especially, like you said, if this is as good as it gets as the moment you get it, I don't want to be spending my upper level spell slots doing an effect that doesn't pro promote my class's identity, that doesn't promote the archetype that I'm playing in any reasonable way, and I don't think Blur does that. I don't think Blur promotes the caster fantasy in any way, shape, or form by dealing area of effect damage, locking spaces down, creating big, splashy, magical effects. It's just things are having a harder time hitting me, and that's not useful to the class's goals. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, I'd feel, yeah, I'd be one of those afraid to die type players. And uh, whatever's happening, yeah, all right, the, the Barbarian and the Paladin are up front soaking up most of the damage. But the DM's not ignoring me. They, yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing shit and they're going to, he's going to send a couple arrows my way or something. And uh, uh, I'll feel good when they miss. I think you would have felt better if you had killed the archers with a bigger, splashier effect. Or, better yet, held one of the archers even. I think I would take over this every single time, right? Like, yeah. I think I would take effects that remove an enemy combatant from attacking me outright, and then I have I have delivered on me being more protected, right? By removing an entity or incapacitating an enemy or making it difficult for them to actually get to me and more, you're still defending yourself. You're still doing what Blur did. You're reducing your incoming total hits. But you're doing it in a way that's also proactive, right? And that's a really huge difference, I think, the spell's really overcast for that reason. I don't think you need to be spending spell slots dodging. Um. Yeah, well, 
like I said, it's not it's not exactly the same as Dodge. It's not exactly Dodge, the same as Dodge, but it's Dodge very close. works once. Yes, this it, sometimes works more than to once. Keep blowing. It, I think it often works more than once. Okay. Not, Do you if you like, you're in a fight, you aren't necessarily caught off guard, but you only have one second level spell slot left. And you're, again, third, fourth level characters. How reasonably do you think it is to put cast Blur or cast a more impactful spell on the fight? All right. I am uh, I'm now taking a look at wizard second level spells just to get a full uh, appreciation. Of, As to what of you should options. be doing? Yeah, there's a lot of choices here. There sure are. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I want to like blur. I want to. I don't use think blur is but... heinous. It's not uncastable. There are windows and characters that want it. There aren't many of them. And again, the window that you want it is very short. It's third and fourth level blade singers. Okay. <laughs> um. I get it's a little yeah, bit more passable on artificers, but I'm too big a fan of web to, to take blur in its place. And Webb will lock things down to prevent them from hitting yes, you. Yes, and then you're yes. performing the role that you're supposed to perform, which yes. is the crowd controlling big magical spell effects character, not just I get hit slightly less. Now it's the whole team gets hit slightly less, and those things aren't taking actions, and I'm being a big impactful person. Yeah. But I'll still light the web on fire. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's ruin the <laughs> control, crowd control that we set on it. Exactly. But I want your right to let them loose when you fireball them. All right. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah. I, on a much more limited spell list, I I, I would like I, I I know I do like blur, but I'd probably get more use out of it on a more limited spell list. I think again, more limited spell list or more niche archetype. I think this is a little bit it's reasonable. I don't think I think you're playing a very different game or have this on very different characters if you want blur to be good, right? Like if this were an Eldritch Knight feature or a, I guess Eldritch Knights could conceivably consider this. Disadvantage of all talk rolls against them seems fine. Again, this is all within the scope of you have the action round, the pregame round to do it. If you don't have yeah. the uh, the action prior to set this up, I don't want to cast it. So you have, if, you, if you're given the setup round, then I'm happy on it on the martial defensive characters that get access to wizard and sorcerer spells, right? Then I'm fine with it. That's where I think it's the only really place it has its own. I think if you're otherwise doing a character whose job it is to not take hits, but to do damage, to control areas, to do other things, I want different single-level spells. And it doesn't take much for me to want them over this. Let me ask you this. Are there any subclasses of any classes that get Blur as a, a bonus spell? Uh, Druid Circle of the Coast, I think, from land gets it as a bonus spell. All right, then I like it there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there might be like a paladin or a um, a ranger option that get it. I think both of us probably have a better home with it if they do a tank thing with it, right? Like your objective is to not take damage, block more hits, leverage a high AC paired with the disadvantage. So things aren't even ever critting you, right? Like that's where it's disadvantage would be really, really good is no longer anything can hit me. That's where it's like a little bit of extra boon. Um, mm. I don't love it on... The class of the token again. Again, artificer I think is pretty solid on. If you're the melee ranged artificer, that seems fine. Like armorer or battlesmith, I could conceivably take it on those characters. I don't want this on most wizards. I don't want this on most sorcerers, but that's okay. It has a home on some sheets. It's not most. I'm picturing this more useful on uh, ranged characters. You know, people are staying out of the mess. I completely trying to. Yeah, I know, but uh, they're gonna get attacked less often, and thus. It will do less, <laughs> right? If you're giving it, do you, is it better when it's giving disadvantage to more attack rolls or less attack rolls? Well, I mean, either way, if it's going to, if if you're going to lose it after you get hit twice, let's say, or after, after three attacks against you are made, then this is lasting you longer in the fight. And it's doing Which, exactly the same yeah, thing yes, on yes, both those is. characters. Yes, it right? is. But I feel like it's doing more. If it's it wasting your longer. concentration for a longer period of time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not concentrating on something meaningful for that position of time. It's yeah, way you worse anyway, on characters that can't You didn't have anything to concentrate on anyway because you're using blur. Because you wasted blur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> blur is not... Blur is nichely good on a very small subset of characters in a very small window of time. And on those characters, I think it's a two. And on everyone else, because they still have the better things I'd rather concentrate with them on. Or even, like, use their spell slots for other, again, proactive things to end the fight, not just to prevent me from dying, but to actually win the game. I don't think Blur has a home on the vast number of people's sheets. I think I see it way overcast. It 
if you're only seeing three or four attack rolls come at you in a fight, I don't think you should have blur up. I think you would be way better off with tons of different options. If if you're casting blur on yourself and your barbarian goes down and your paladin goes down, any number of other second level spells could have more likely prevented that from occurring outright, and then you were never in danger to need the blur. All right. Well, I'm going to give it a three just to spite you. All right, that's reasonable. Right, just because I, I, I do, I like it. I like it better than you do, so I feel like I should give it a higher rating. Even though uh, bad. two, two is probably fair, but yes, I'll okay. give it a three. All right. All right, that was Blur. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, I know it, Sam said it's overcast, so I know a lot of you like it. So uh, tell us what you think. Otherwise, uh, yeah, write other stuff in the comments. And then uh, like and subscribe and all that. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.